Thank you, Maria. The next two hours, I'm going to discuss post-engine concrete, uh, the construction and the observation issues, which would be beneficial to uh, a lot of different individuals, contractors, engineers, and even inspectors. This webinar is not really focused on the numbers or particular code sections and, and, and uh, stuff like that. There's different webinars for that. But this is purely a side of what it should look like, what it shouldn't look like, and when you go out to the site, the things to highlight to the observers or your inspectors to ensure the best possible product you can get using post tension. Now, moving forward, we're going to discuss a, a couple of very important topics. First, tendon layout. Uh, next, we're going to go of curbing of tendons, anchorage zones, which are important for two-way slab designs or mat designs, the use of pour and delay strips, some of the things that they are very useful for, and then some of the things that there are some myths about that you should look out for as well. Slip connections, which are very important regardless if you're using a 100 uh, foot by 100 foot building or 400 feet by 400 feet, the slip connections are very important to the performance of post tension concrete, have, really have nothing to do with the engineering aspect in terms of the numbers or a finite element approach. It basically has to do with the detailing and the construction at the site. Have a long discussion about conduit and then f final, finalize the, or finish the um, webinar with print, uh, excuse me, with penetration Penetrations, integrity tendons, and then lastly, we'll talk about elongations. And again, uh, if you have questions, as Maria uh, mentioned, please write them down. Um, happy to answer any question, even it really doesn't have much to do with the seminar. If you have something that's just I'm nagging at you with post engine concrete, I'll do my best to answer the question. If you do have questions um, that come up after the webinar is over, uh, please feel free to email me at Brian, my first name, B R Y A N, at SenecaStructural.com, and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. So, moving forward, uh, I'm going to give a shameless plug for my book. Basically, everything I'm going to cover in today's webinars and the other webinars I'm giving in the future are covered in this book, uh, Post Engine Concrete Principles and Practice. It's in its third edition. You can purchase it through SK Ghosh and Associates. Uh, lulu.com and I think it's on Amazon as well. Uh, basically the book is broken into two segments. The first half of the book is the undergraduate course you would take at you know, obviously university. Uh, it's currently being taught or being used at UCLA, Cal Poly Slow, Cal State LA and the University of Portland. Um, so if you really have no idea about the numerical side of post engine concrete, uh, this would be a great starting point. And if you are so inclined to you know, go back to the college days, my business partner, Dirk, who teaches at UCLA and, and Cal Poly, he actually has recorded his lectures for the entire 10-week uh, course that correspond to this book on YouTube. So if you search his name, Dirk Bondi, or post engine Concrete, I think you'll come up with those lectures. And again, if you are so inclined after the fact, uh, we can send you homework assignments and, and tests if you really want to. So it's all there. The second half of the book is much more the practicing engineer side. We discuss uh, post engine beams and one-way slabs, parking garages, two-way slabs, mat foundations, diaphragms, uh, construction observation issues. And there's a lot of pictures in the book. So every time we try to describe something, we try to add two or three pictures. And the pictures obviously are worth a thousand words. So if you are interested, please feel free to pick it up. Um, but most of the stuff you're going to see comes from uh, one of the chapters in this book. So starting out the webinar with uniform tendons, we're going to discuss a layout of a two-way slab. Now, without getting into the numerics or kind of the theory of two-way post tension slab design, a two-way post tension slab is laid out with a band direction, which is um, all the tendons in one direction grouped together. Perpendicular to that are the uniform tendons, which you can see here. Now, in this photograph, the tendons are in blue, and you can see the tendons right here another tendon group here, and so forth and so forth. So the uniform tendons are equally spaced, plus or minus, across the slab. They are draped high over the supports, or tension on the top of the slab. They are low in the slab at the mid-span, so tension on the bottom. So basically, the profile of these strands should match the moment profile if you were to graph this on software or a finite element uh, program. So you're high here, they drape down low, and then drape back up over the supports. Now with these tendons, we as engineers provide the high point, the low point at mid-span, and then the corresponding high point at the next support. The chairs that you see here, here, and here, then likewise here, there, and at that location are provided by the PT uh, 
uh, detailer or the shop drawings. We do not calculate the parabolic profile. We just look at the two extreme locations, support and mid-span. So if your observer is going out there, if you're going to use a tape measure, basically just look at mid-span and the high point because that's really all you know, we care about in terms of the profile. The, the parabolic profile will be provided by the PT supplier.